Good afternoon and welcome to our channel. If you've seen any of my solar videos before, you know I love to showcase new equipment for you that will one, help you save space and two, help you to be able to buy small and then scale up to save money. Today I've got another solar battery storage solution that you are going to love. Let's take a look at it. This is the big battery ethos. It is sleek, beautiful, very powerful, and expandable. Each one of these batteries is a 5.12 kilowatt hour, 48 volt battery. This up here is the control unit, it is basically the BMS for the entire system. Here's the cool thing. You can parallel up to 16 of these units together on just one control unit. And then this control unit is what will communicate with your inverter if you choose closed loop communication. If you choose open communication like I normally do, this control unit still lets all of the batteries talk together. So you do need the control unit. And check this out. This is what I love so far about the size of it. These are super thin. They can go against a wall and you are barely using any wall space. They are only six and three quarters inches deep. And the single unit right here is just a little under 29 inches tall. And we are about 26 and a half inches wide. And that's going to fit in a lot of tight little spaces. These have a 10 year warranty, an internal fire suppression system, and they are IP65 rated. Well, what's that mean? That means they can be used outside as well in the right conditions. That IP65 rating means that it is protected against dust intrusion and splashing water intrusion. And I'll show you a little later when I set it up some of those details. And one thing that's also unique about this is its discharge and charging current. It's almost twice as much as a lot of the other different batteries out there on the market. This system, if you have three batteries parallel together, will discharge 250 amps for 15 seconds. So it has a unique connection to your inverter with two sets of positive and negative battery cables. I'm going to show you something a little bit later on how we are modifying that and talk about how we are doing that. So the IP65 rating is really important for me because I am out of space in my solar room. So this is going to go outside. This would have been the perfect spot for it, but this is exactly where all of my cabling runs outside for my indoor batteries and comes back inside from the flex boss inverter and runs back to my main panel. So there's no moving this wiring trough. So we are going outside and I'll show you the full installation out there. Here we are in the exterior of our house on the north side and we are protected a little bit from the elements from our overhang. This is the perfect spot to add that ethos battery system. We've got our flex boss inverter and our pites box. If you haven't seen the videos for these installations, click on the link at the top of the screen. Right next to the Pites V-Box is going to go the new Etho system. I have a unique setup for this and I'm going to explain why I've got this Unistrut buried in the ground. So to mount your Ethos batteries, you will need to use the included brackets. They are very precisely aligned with each battery and they can only be mounted really on a flat surface. So most exterior profiles of homes are not going to be flat. They have pieces of trim or overlap siding like this overlap hardy siding here. You need to do some sort of adaptation on the exterior of your siding to be able to get those brackets to mount perfectly flush to the building and fit precisely with those batteries. So you need a dead flat surface on the exterior to be able to mount your Ethos batteries. Brick is one of them, but you can also do something like we're doing here. We've got our Unistrut buried two feet in the ground in the concrete and braced. So if you buy one of the kits, this is the base that's going to come with it. Make sure you set this base down on a level and flat surface and have these rubber washers with this shorter diameter here toward the front. And you can see on the top of the battery unit, it has those same rubber stoppers. And on the bottom of the control box and on the batteries, it has these indentations. That's where the rubber stoppers will sit and prevent it from sliding off of each other. So we have our bottom battery in place on our base. So let me show you under this cover, the side of the battery and some of the physical aspects of it. When you open up your battery out of the package, it's going to have one screw in this top hole right here. Take that screw out and then just 
pop off the cover. Now this is a big upgrade since some of the earlier models. The earlier models I think used to be plastic and they had a lot of vents in them, but this is much more solid. It's got knockouts for any conduit that you want to run to it. Under the cover, you see our battery connections for paralleling the batteries together and our breaker. And to connect it to the brackets, wherever you are going to mount them, you need to remove this bottom, right, or back screw. That's where that bracket mounts and connects to the battery. So some of the ways that this achieves that IP65 rating is these gaskets. You can see this gasket right here, which is keeping out water and dust. Same with our breaker enclosure, it's rated for the same. And then the battery cables have Amphenol connectors on them, which creates a seal here. Also, our dip switches are underneath this plate right here, which has a seal around it. We've got a seal on the back right here. And then our comms cables are also weather tight. Now let's get this battery in place and connected to our bottom brackets. If you are interested in getting one of these systems, we do have a link for it in the description below the video. And along with that, we have a coupon code for $50 off if you use our link. Okay, we've got our three batteries in place stacked upon each other, and they are all connected via the brackets to our Unistrut, which is buried in the ground in concrete. That should hold things secure. We've also got our control box on top. I love the fact that these are so skinny and they will fit indoors in so many different situations. The multiple ways that you can configure this is awesome and it will give you many different opportunities to place it in very small spaces. These covers are nice, but one thing I wish Big Battery would do is think about how this screw comes out of this hole right here because it is very, very difficult to get out if you do not have a magnetic screwdriver, which I highly recommend for this job. Additionally, that's a real challenge when you're getting it out of the box initially. In addition to that, some leniency on the design of the bracket for the wall situations would be good. Some slots that move up and down, a bigger bracket that's got some play in it so that you can move it around and get it lined up because if you don't get this perfectly precise, then it is a real challenge to get it anchored. That little bit of flexibility will give the consumer like me a little bit easier time putting things together and that is much appreciated. Okay, let's start the wiring. Each battery comes with a positive and negative battery cable. Each of these has Amphenol connectors on either side. And then it also comes with a communications jumper which goes on the other side of the batteries. This is really just plug and play. It's super simple. Take off the protective caps the bottom of the battery control box and the top battery. We're gonna bring our connector up through the handle and just pop it on. And you'll tell when they connect properly because it just pops on and there's a little button here that will pop out, just like that. Do it for each one. So to properly parallel the batteries for this system, you can see I've got two extra connectors here at the top on the control box. And I actually also have two extras at the bottom. The control box comes with these additional long battery cables with Amphenol connectors on each side and they go from the top positive to the bottom positive, top negative to the bottom negative. Just snake them through all of the handles the best that you can and connect them at the bottom. Make sure you run the long battery cables from the top to the bottom on the outside of everything on the outside of the other connectors. Because if you don't, if you run them down the center, you won't be able to get the door open for the breaker. Okay friends, on this side of the battery, we are going to do communications. We've got our short jumper communication cables, and we've got our long cable that will go to the inverter if you decide to do closed loop communications with this. I'm gonna set that up here for now and talk about that a little bit later. For this, we're gonna come from the one that indicates battery, to the top of the first battery. It's basically plug and play. Just plug it in and tighten it down. Now for each subsequent battery that you have connected, you're gonna come from your communication port on the bottom of the battery to the top of the next battery. Now you can see on each battery and the control unit, we have a grounding lug here. It is not required, but recommended that you connect all of these together with an electrical grounding conductor take that back, back to your inverter through your entire system. You will additionally receive two sets of long one aught battery cable. One end has an Amphenol connector and the other end 
is just bare. That bare end will go into your inverter. So we're gonna have two sets of these coming out of our ethos system. And that's because the charging and discharge current for this ethos system is so high, like I talked about earlier in the video. Now comes a challenge. You have to have your ethos system located a short distance away from your inverter to connect your battery cables. Because as you can see, my flex boss over there in the corner, these aren't even close. What you can do is use one of these inline splice connectors like I did for my EG4 batteries when I moved my flex boss outside because they are a distance away in the house. You'll get a little bit of power loss, but not much. So we can add these on the end, get some more one out cable and run it into our flex boss. But in the flex boss, we only have four battery lug connections. So we would only be able to connect the Etho system and not any of our other batteries. So if you already have other batteries in place and you are adding the Ethos into your system, how are we gonna do that? And that is via a common bus bar. And since the amperage is so high on these, you need to buy the appropriate bus bar. These are rated for 600 amps. The reason I'm doing that is for safety and I'm combining both of these and running them into the Flex Boss. I'll leave a link for these in the description below the video as well. I'm gonna mount these in a protective box back here run all the cables and then run it to our inverter with this 4 aught cable. Make sure everything you are using for your specific project is rated for it. This will work for ours. Let's get these bus bars mounted and some holes drilled in it for our battery cables. Now, if you recall, we also have the opportunity to do closed loop communications with the Etho system to the Flex Boss, but we are actually not going to do that because our cable is very short. We will need a little jumper and another cable that is correctly pinned out. So we are just going to do open loop communication at this point. Friends, I really want you to take care when you're crafting your cables. Make sure they are the proper size and insulation rating. And friends, make sure whatever you do, please crimp your lugs or cold weld your lugs onto the ends of your battery cables. You can do that with a crimping machine like this. They are not expensive. I think I paid 75 bucks for this. It's in the description below the video. And I didn't buy that until later. This is what I used first which is an impact crimper, which just uses a hammer blow to crimp your lug. This was cheap, like 12 bucks. There's no reason not to buy this. And if you're gonna be doing a lot of work, this is way easier, just get one. Also make sure you use heat shrink on there to protect this area. I just wanted to cover that in light of some recent DIY solar videos that have come out that didn't do this. Okay, we have our bus bars in place. Let me show you what I did. We got our positives on the right, our negatives on the left. We've got our big four aught cable going over to our flex boss. And we've got these cables, these one aught cables going over to our big battery ethos. Everything's secure and torqued to proper spec. Unfortunately, I can't put on these nice protective covers that came with it because the end pieces won't break off. The side pieces are made to break off. No big deal, it's contained. Everything's torqued down and we will put the cover on the outside of the box. As I mentioned before, it looks like there was a slight design change in the covers from the older model. There's no cutout along the side for our wires to come out. There are only the knockouts. And the kit doesn't come with any knockout protectors, so you're gonna have to find those yourself. So I'm gonna disconnect these and run them through the top and then reconnect them. We got it, but I don't think it's the best, easiest design for these covers. No big deal. Okay, let's power everything up. Breakers first, then we'll turn on the BMS. We also need to configure the dip switches on each battery, and those all need to be set different. You can find that on page 16 in the manual. They are contained under these little covers on the side of each battery. Be careful, these screws are quite small. Your battery directly under your control box should be set to ID1. And just to keep things nice and clean, set the next one to two, the next one to three, and so on through the chain. ID1 for the first battery is down, 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 up. So click that fourth one up. Seal everything back up, move on to the next battery. Power on your BMSs. 
and let's go to the front screen. This main screen is a little challenging to see outside. I will see if there are any brightness settings once I get into it. But this screen indicates the state of charge and all of the other things you need to know. Uh, voltage, um, date, and all of that. We're gonna hit the back button. We're gonna see what our protocol is and our BMS version or firmware version is. And that's how you can find that. We're gonna hit enter. We're gonna hold down back for five seconds. And then we can see that it will give us our protocol setting, our RS-485 setting and our CAN protocol setting. We're gonna to go to our RS-485. We're gonna scroll down to LUX, which is for the EG4. We're gonna hit enter. Then we're gonna scroll down and also set the CAN setting to LUX. And this one already is. And that way, whatever communication protocol we use, whether it's CAN or, or RS-485, it will communicate with our EG4 FlexBoss. Okay, our Ethos system is up and running. I just wanna check how we're looking here at our FlexBoss. And coming in, we've got 52.7 volts. Our battery breaker is still off. We're gonna kick that on and power up our FlexBoss. Now, I do want to remind everybody that in shipping and in the warehouse, Lithium iron phosphate batteries are sitting at about a 50% state of charge. Ours say about 53. You do not want to connect all of your batteries together at the same time if they are out of balance. So my Pites batteries and the EG4 batteries in the inside of the house are at 100% state of charge. So we want to keep those off and charge our ethos up to 100% before we add all the batteries together in the system. As soon as we turn back on our PV disconnect on the FlexBoss, we're going to start charging our big battery ethos. And that's it. We can put these covers back on and make everything look as beautiful as it did when it came out of the package. Well, friends, that's it. That's how to set up this really easy, modular, very cool system by Big Battery. You can buy just one battery and the control box to start, which is really nice. And then as you save up, buy as many as you need. Again, the form factor is fantastic, and I really love companies that are thinking about that. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which is the installation video for our FlexBoss. Have a beautiful, blessed day. See you next time.